Hey guys, welcome to another video. In this video I want to cover off nimble replication and setting up nimble replication between two nimble arrays. So here I've got my primary array on site A and I've got my backup array on site B. So I'm just going to log into my primary array. Head over to manage and down to data protection. And then on the left, as you can see, I've got replication partners. So I'll click on here. And then I've got a plus symbol here to add an array, a partner array. So this is something that we need to do on both sides. So I've got two arrays I need to set up, go through this procedure on both sides in order for this to work. So I'm going to set up an on-premise array. So it's already defaulting to that. So I'll just click next. And here it's asking for the partner name. This is the partner group array name. So let's put that in. The description is optional, so I'm going to leave this blank. And here I can put in a host name or an IP address. I'm going to go with the land management network so I'm going to put the land management uh, virtual IP in here and then we need a shared secret to authenticate now this secret must be the same password on both sides so on both arrays and also note that Nimble doesn't integrate any sort of cable uh, not cable key management system as of today so whatever password you use make sure you put that in some sort of key management system somewhere that it's secure and not going to be lost so I'm just going to punch a password in and as I mentioned briefly I'm going to use the management land management network for replication so you can if you wish uh, VLAN this out and or across the same ports if you wish or you can use the data IPs in my case the uh, data IPs the SAN network is an isolated layer 2 infrastructure so there's no connectivity between arrays so I'm not going to use that it's also worth noting that Nimble uses IP for replication. So if you have a fiber channel array on one side and an iSCSI array on the other side, that's fine. You can do cross-site replication between them two arrays. In here, the inbound location, it gives me the option of what pool or folder I'm going to use. And with every Nimble array that's installed today, it automatically creates a default pool called default. So I'm going to select that because that's all I've got here. And then, as it says in this uh, side of this box, use the same pool or folder as the source location if the location also exists on the local group. So I'm going to put a tick in that because that's what I want to do. And then here I can set up a uh, quality of service uh, policy. I don't want one, however, I'm just going to show click on that so you can see what it looks like. And it's as simple as just creating a description, and again, it's optional. The bandwidth limitation, so typically the arrays are sat across a one, one connection, which you know is a limiting resource. And it may be a shared WAN connection. So if you've got other services running across that WAN connection, you don't want to flood that with storage replication traffic. So you can put a, a bandwidth limitation in there if you wish, along with timing intervals for that QO, uh, QoS policy to take place. As I said, in my case, I'm not going to use one. So I'm going to just click on the remove. And click create so that's brill that's successfully created and as I said I need to jump over to the array in my backup site to go through the same process so I'm just gonna hold on to that array 
manage data protection and again whoops my mistake getting ahead of myself there replication partners on premise click next the partner name so this is my primary array that I'm putting in here which in my case is just tech vids group description I'm going to leave off again and then my host name or IP address of my primary array and the same password that I used on the other array again um, I've got the same network topology on this side so I've got an isolated SAN infrastructure so I'm going to use the management or control IPs for replication and again put the, put the tick in the box and use my default pool Oops. typo and then I'm going to click create and as you can see it's now created the replication partner on this side so if all goes well I should be able to test this so as you can see at the moment it's showing unreachable just because it's just created the replication partner and we now need to test to make sure it can communicate with its partner so I'm going to put tick in this box and hit test and that's brill so I've got a status here as you can see as a live so it's, it's contacted its replication partner successfully so I'm just going to jump back over to my primary site and I'm going to carry out the same test and in fact it's already showing alive anyway so that's brilliant so that's that setup and I'm just going to show you what that enables so if I go over to manage and then data storage and then I'm going to create a new volume and I'm just going to give it a name of test from my default pool and I'm going to present this to an SQL 2012 server. Let's make it 10 gigabytes. And at the moment, I've got no data protection policies set up. I'm going to give it unrestricted access just for test purposes. Obviously, if this is in production, you need to tie this down to using your initiators to individual volumes that you want that to access and again I'm not going to use chat because this is only for test and then we have this allow multiple initiate access so if you're using virtualization like Hyper-V or VMware typically um, and you're presenting one volume to the cluster make sure you put a tick in this box so that multiple volumes can access that disk otherwise you're going to have one that can read and write to it and the others you're going to have problems with just going to click on more options just so you can see what what's changed since I've set up the replication partner I'm just going to leave everything as what I've just put in there I'm going to click next now here on protection if I create a new volume collection and then here you've got replication partners and at the moment it's showing us none if I click on that that drop down box you can now see there is my backup array TechVix group back for backup array so if I click on that as you can see on my schedule my snap snapshot schedule it's now give me these options so this brings the options to be able to replicate to my partner array and also how how many snapshots I want to sorry how how frequent I want to replicate and how many snapshots I want to replicate 
uh, sorry, retain on my backup array. And then you've got basically an alert if it doesn't complete within this time frame. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this has been helpful. As always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe.